Hey everybody, so today we are looking at a uh, Vox, uh, an AC15. Um, this one came in, will not power on. You flip the switches and nothing happens. So um, I thought maybe it would be a good idea to sort of run through um, steps I might go through to uh, check and uh, see why that's happening and see if it's something that you could maybe uh, fix yourself. This is just a little bit of the uh, troubleshooting methodology, I guess. Um, so anytime that um, you flip a switch and power won't go on, there's probably a blown fuse somewhere. Um, now, whether that fuse was just weak um, and that just needs to be replaced or there's something that caused it to blow, uh, that's something that we need to investigate. But first step is finding that blown fuse. Um, some of these amps will have a little uh, fuse holder on them that's accessible from the outside uh, or uh, like it'll be one of those little twist knobs uh, or it can be built into the IEC uh, power connector. Um, this one does not, uh, in, in this model Vox anyway, and I should say this is a uh, AC15 uh, TB, uh, and this is the 2002 um, version. So, uh, you know, if you're looking up schematics, make sure you, you look for the right one um, if you're having to go further into this, if you're concerned about schematics at all. And for some of you out there, that may not even be an issue because you're not sure about all that and you don't even want to go there, so that's fine. Um, okay, so I pulled this amp chassis out, and first thing that I see uh, when I look in here is there is a blown fuse, um, and this one here connects up, if you follow the wire traces back, it goes into the power switch, uh, and the other side goes into the, the transformer. So this is on the primary side um, that that fuse is blown. So uh, with that information, um, we definitely need to replace that fuse, and it's written here right on the board what it is. Uh, for 110 volt, it's a, a T1A, so that's um, time delay. Uh, for your fuses, if there's a T with it, that means it's a time delay fuse. Now there's different types of time delay fuses. Pretty much any that you use in something like this is going to be okay. Um, if there's an F or it's not listed, a lot of times that'll just be a fast blow fuse. Um, yeah. And I see here, I'll have to check these actual fuses. Anytime that you see inside, if there's a little, um, what looks like a daub of solder inside, or uh, it looks like it's a little bit bigger filament that's wound, a lot of times those are time delay fuses. You can't always tell. You, you need to look on the fuse itself to see what, uh, what markings there are. But um, that can be another way that you can sort of tell what's in there. Um, and, you know, having a fast blow fuse in a, in a time delay fuse slot yeah, it can work for some amount of time, but uh, sometimes that can, just getting the right fuse in there um, can fix your problem. Okay, so I'm going to look for another fuse, uh, and other thing I want to do while I, when I check things out, uh, I want to look and see if there's anything visually that looks off, that looks burned, that looks charred, um, looks excessively dirty, um, any like soot type stuff or just any amount of dirt or anything that's baked on in there, any evidence that maybe something was spilled inside. Um, and I also want to get a look at the tubes as well. And I'm probably going to pull those and check those. You may not have the ability to do that, but uh, you could always swap tubes if need be. Um, so we're going to take a look because something that uh, can be a problem uh, right off the bat when a fuse fails like that, uh, if there's a rectifier um, tube, which this amp has, um, we're going to want to check that rectifier tube, uh, even though I think it has its own fuse here. If I'm looking at my wires, um, yeah, so we'll have to check that out and see see what's going on there, but we could, uh, we could need a new rectifier tube. So um, I'm going to continue taking this apart, and uh, we'll come back when I have some more info for you. Uh, so I thought it might be sort of neat to show you the tube tester that I use. Uh, this is one that I built myself. Um, it was a kit, like all the circuit board and stuff all came as a thing, and uh, I had to take my own box. This is a, an emergency light box, actually, that I repurposed. I drilled a bunch of holes in and painted it primer gray um, and put all my controls and everything in it. Uh, and and this is a procedure that I'll normally go through, um, especially with power tubes, just to make sure that things are, are okay with them, especially if there's any issues in an amp. Um, and a lot of times I'll test preamp tubes as well if I suspect that there's anything. Um, you know, it takes a little bit of time to do, so it's not like I'm going to go through every tube in an amp every single time, uh, especially if there doesn't seem to be an issue. Um, 
And this tube tester won't necessarily always tell me if there is absolutely something wrong with the tube. It just sort of helps me gauge how things are performing, what the wear is on the tube, and how tightly um, tubes are matched. And sort of over time, I've uh, you know developed my own charts and stuff like that uh, as to during operational parameters, you know, higher plate voltages, um, proper to negative voltage on the grid, sort of what tubes are drawing uh, in practice, and I can match those up with the uh, the rating systems uh, from the suppliers that I use. Um, and why that's important is because you can actually, on a lot of the testing sheets, um, you know, having a 250 volt uh, plate end screen, um, and then uh, whatever your negative grid voltages, you won't necessarily know, you'll know whether the tube is good or bad if there's a, a flaw, an actual flaw in it. Um, but a lot of times they'll operate differently once you start getting up to higher voltages. Now this tester, I think the highest I can get up to reliably is somewhere around 360 volts. Um, that's what I'll test 6V6, or 6L6 is at. Um, and that'll give me a really good indication as to whether that tube is good. Um, whether it's performing within acceptable specifications. And beyond that, um, I can sort of at least gauge to some degree what the wear is on the tube. Um, but even that um, can be somewhat problematic. You need some other you need some other parameters to be able to measure to really accurately ascertain how much life is left in that tube. But this overall does a pretty good job and it saved me a lot of time uh, in a lot of different scenarios, uh, you know, helping me to track down issues quicker, um, yeah, inside of an amp. Okay, so I've got this EL84 in here from the Vox, uh, and I've sort of set up my parameters. And as these, as your tubes heat up and stuff, you know, these numbers move around a little bit. Uh, you can readjust. And and because I don't have this hooked up on a constant voltage, like if, you, if you're getting a slight fluctuation in your wall voltage, if it goes up or down a volt, you'll notice changes in here as well. Um, so these are, I believe these are the JJ specs off of their chart, the 250 and 250. Now, for just plain testing purposes to see if a, if a tube's okay, these parameters will be fine. Uh, if I want operational parameters, I might want to use some different settings, some higher voltages to sort of mimic what would be in the amp. But for our purposes, um, this will work just fine. So uh, for JJ, you want a screen and plate voltage of 250 volts and our grid uh, we want negative 9 volts and uh, what we're looking for on our plate current will be around 28 milliamps would be a, a mid-rated tube um, that's the acceptable range so we'll hit the test button and we'll see what happens we have in the mid 28 it's gonna jump around a bit and that's fine 28 and a half. So that's perfect. Uh, our red light didn't come on, so uh, that's good. Now, sometimes uh, just when the tube is heating up, this light will flash, um, and I believe, like, that's okay. That doesn't mean that the tube is bad. Um, it'll sort of pulse this light. Um, so if that pulses a little bit, that's fine. If it lights up, and sometimes even if it lights up very dimly, sometimes I gotta cut my hand around that and look, and uh, even if it's very dim, um, that can be an indication that the tube is bad or has some sort of internal issue. Okay, so I've turned the lights down some. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but uh, we've got the rectifier lit up. Um, the power tubes over here are lit up, kind of on the edge of the screen. Um, we flip it to operate, and everything's all good. Uh, and this is under load, so this won't be the actual wall voltage, but um, we're hovering around almost 106 volts. Uh, and that would be normal, so that'll be, that'll correct to about, I don't know, maybe 118 or something like that uh, with no load on it. So um, we know what the issue is, so let me show you um, what I found and what I suspected the problem was uh, almost immediately. And this is why I said to uh, check and look at your tubes. See if you can see this or not. Uh, I'll try to get a couple different shots of this and I can always splice it in if need be. This is a 5Y3 uh, Sovtech. Um, 
if you can see that there, I don't know. There might be too much glare. But um, these have a tube inside uh, the middle of them there. And I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Through that little hole uh, here in between the, the bigger gray plates, um, right there at the tip of my fingernail. You can almost see a little bit of white, but there's gray in between. Uh, you can get a better look at it here maybe. See there, it's all gray. There is a coating that is on that center piece. Uh, well, you can actually see a piece of it here that's come off and lodged um, there internally in the tube. I don't know if that's a ceramic coating or what it is. Um, you can actually see it. This one's still hot. Uh, I'll show it to you after, but um, that's actually broken off, flaked off from the inside of here. And this is sort of odd. This is uh, this is the only time I've seen a rectifier. Normally they either work or they don't. Um, but I could slowly bring the voltage up on this, and just before it got to 100 volts uh, under load, all of a sudden this thing would start to um, short. It would arc out inside. There was there was a short, um, but it would conduct all the way up to that point <laughs> until it would uh, it would short out. So um, you're getting up to you know close to probably 110 volts um, in. Uh, before that would that that rectifier would actually act up and short out. So that's sort of odd. I've never seen that before. Maybe it's more common than I realize. But uh, anytime I have had ones that are bad, the rectifier either works or it doesn't. Um, you know, it'll blow a fuse, and uh, you know, trying to do anything like it's very apparent that that's what the issue is. Um, I mean, this was of course apparent as soon as I looked at it visually. Um, if you know what to look for, then that was a pretty pretty quick one. So. Um, this is one of my tubes, so I'm going to have to either find or order another 5Y3 for this customer, but uh, everything else seems to check out. Um, and yeah, so I think that's going to be it for this video. Um, stuff to watch out for with rectifier tubes, I guess. Uh, this one's cool enough now, I can pull it out. Um, if I can get that to focus, there we go. See the white uh, right there? That's that coating, whether it's ceramic or whatever it is. Uh, somebody out there will know probably exactly what it is. And tell me so in the comments. <laughs> uh, so that coating has to be all the way up through there, and I assume that that insulates it from, from the plates that are there. Um, but anyway, that is our issue. So another one solved.